A massive IT glitch has crashed computer systems around the world. Not only airports, but also hospitals and businesses have been affected, with computers shut down or unable to access networks. The main reason? An outage in Microsoft's cloud services and related apps. Travel disruptions have been the most obvious consequence of the global IT failure. Airports stretching from the US to Australia and including India, the UAE, Hong Kong, Singapore and Malaysia all saw their booking systems fail, forcing staff to check in passengers manually. Scenes of confusion at many arrival halls as flights were cancelled or delayed. Major American carriers grounded planes for hours due to communication issues. Airlines in Europe also suspended most of their operations. Microsoft says the underlying problem has been fixed for 365 apps and services, but warned that some customers may still experience issues. The issue has only affected Windows computers, many showing the infamous blue screen of death. CrowdStrike has admitted its software update caused the glitch and they are deeply sorry for the impact caused to everyone affected. The CEO of the cybersecurity platform says a defect was found in a single content update for Windows computers and has deployed a fix for the issue. The company also stresses that it was not hit by a cyber attack. Hong Kong's airport is among those affected by the IT outage. Deborah Wong has more on how hard it was hit and how it's coping. So the airport authority uh, made clear that uh, flight operations are um, are not affected. But when the outage happened, you know, self-service secures at the airport, Hong Kong Station as well as Kowloon Station, where uh, there are city check-ins, they all became unavailable. Uh, there are long lines at counters at the airport, you know, angry voices all across as well. You know, people are understandably frustrated because local media have been reporting that passengers were actually standing in line for close to six hours, you know. And the issue is especially worrying for those with connecting flights because when they get to the counters, uh, the check-in staff have to write down all these details by hand and that is taking a lot of time you know but the authorities are trying to defuse the situation early in the afternoon uh, security personnel were deployed is taking a lot of time you know but the authorities are trying to defuse the situation early in the afternoon uh, security personnel were deployed uh, around the airport to try and contain the situation you know staff have also been uh, sent out to hand out refreshments to very frustrated passengers Hong Kong-based carriers, uh, Cafe Pacific, Hong Kong Express, as well as Hong Kong Airlines, they have issued advise, uh, advisories for travellers to head to the airport uh, about three hours in advance if they intend to check in their baggage. Uh, as of 5.45 p.m., we saw on their website that uh, some self-check-in services are now up and running. However, uh, baggage drop-offs are still down. Uh, but, you know, passengers then have to figure out how to rebook some flights because, you know, when we tried to um, access some of the booking systems on these websites, they were not available as well. So it looks like it's going to be a long wait. And over in Australia, a snap meeting of emergency authorities was called in response to the global IT outage. Roger Menard tells us the disruption affected millions of people. It's taking some time for a clear and reliable picture to emerge of the cause and scale of this outage, but there's no doubt that much of Australia has been impacted. The first hint of trouble emerged when some airports, including Sydney's, reported technical issues. Details suddenly disappeared from departure boards, and passengers with the budget carrier Jetstar were unable to board some of their flights because of problems with the check-in process. Friday afternoon is particularly busy at domestic terminals here as commuters fly home for the weekend and leisure travellers make the most of a few days off. Virgin Australia spoke of a complete ground stop of flights and told customers that it was aware of a large-scale IT outage impacting multiple airlines and other businesses. Melbourne Airport advised passengers to allow extra time, so it looks like delays could be felt throughout the evening. Thousands of shoppers have also been caught up in the outage. Many customers who'd been purchasing their weekend groceries had to abandon their shopping trolleys at the checkout because the electronics weren't working. One woman phoned into a Sydney radio station to thank her lucky stars that she had some old-fashioned cash on her and was able to get through the checkout with all her goods.
On a more serious note, banks, police and telecommunications have also been affected, with Telstra admitting the issue was causing some hold-ups, but there was no problem with the fixed or mobile phone networks. Police in Victoria admitted that some of their internal IT systems were down, but emergency services were mostly able to keep on working. However, several New South Wales police systems have gone down, restricting the ability of police to disseminate information. Well, tonight the Australian government is working closely with the National Cyber Security Coordinator to attempt to resolve the problem. They insist there is no information to suggest this is a cyber security incident as such, in other words a hack of any kind, with some experts suggesting it's more likely to be a problem linked to Microsoft operating systems. What it does demonstrate is how a simple IT glitch, whatever the cause or the source, can quickly impinge on so much of a nation's infrastructure with the repercussions expected to be felt for hours, if not days, to come. Roger Maynard, CNA, Sydney. And for more on this, I speak next to Associate Professor Go Wei Han from the Information Cluster at the Singapore Institute of Technology. Professor Go, welcome to the studio. So this is a massive global IT glitch. Microsoft systems were down, but we were told that it's cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike that was at fault because of a security update. Uh, share, with, share with us what's the link here and how did this really happen? All right. Uh, so CrowdStrike has this software called Falcon. It is what we call an endpoint detection response software mm -hmm. that's designed to protect systems and that's installed in Windows computers, right? So now apparently what happened was that an update for this particular software causes Windows to generate a blue screen of death and that's what people are seeing. Yeah. Now those terminals that you see at the airport, those are, you know, a result of this update went wrong, so-called. And beyond that, there's also servers, systems, and so on running you know, at the back end processing data and all that. Those yeah. are running Windows. Uh, those could be affected by the software update as well. And that's why you see such a global outage. Do you view this as unprecedented? Uh, it's somewhat mm. unprecedented to see you know, a software update affecting so many uh, different users, so many different uh, things happening at once. Uh, yeah. On one hand, it's the, you know, the systems that uh, are, you know, that's, that people interact with. Yeah. They themselves get uh, the blue screen of death. Mm. On the other hand, there are the servers and so on that runs Windows, right? Those uh, get the botch update and also, you know, because the servers are not functioning, people can't access services. That's why you're seeing all this. So why do some companies experience more severe impacts than others? And why were some companies spared? Right. So if you notice keyword here, Microsoft Windows. Now, apparently mm. what happens is that this only affects uh, the CrowdStrike software installed on Microsoft Windows platforms. So Mac OS Linux is not, in, uh, you know, not affected by this. Now, so if you have a server running Linux, uh, you're fine. If you have mm. a server running uh, something else, uh, FreeBSD, for example, you're fine, right? Yeah. But the majority of people run Windows anyway, so that's what's... And airports in particular yes. are impacted on a massive scale. Yes. So if you see, I mean... If a check-in count, uh, the check-in kiosk, for example, those might be running Windows. Mm. Those need the endpoint protection software anyway, so those are installed. You have uh, servers running at the back end that processes, for example, your baggage checks, your check-ins, uh, your passenger information, your flight date, uh, your flight information, and so on. Those could be affected as well. So, Professor Go, the question is, who should be bearing the responsibility, the costs of these disruptions? Is it CrowdStrike? Is it Microsoft? Is it government agencies even? At this point, I would say it's too early to say, well, mm. you know, who should be responsible or something or anything like that. The, okay. prior the priority right now should really be getting things up and working. Mm. You know, looking at the vulnerabilities of the world's IT infrastructure, does this mean that we have to reassess the way system updates are structured or carried out? Can we do anything to prevent, you know, similar incidents from happening in the future? Yes. So... Typically, when we talk about software updates or system updates, um, there's something called uh, staging platforms where we try to test a patch you know, in a staging environment before we actually deploy it to you know, the wider corporation. Now, the tricky part is for software like uh, this CrowdStrike Falcon software right, or any kind of endpoint detection response, mm. the updates are actually quite frequent. We're talking about daily updates because they need to keep, uh, you know, they need to keep updated with the threats available uh, every now and then, right? Yeah. So having that deployed in a staging environment before being deployed could be quite a tricky thing, but um, it's something that uh, the security engineering team in corporations will need to figure out, like, well, what's the best trade-off to employ when 
testing these uh, patches before deployment, or if they want to do patching, uh, if they want to do a testing before deployment, or if, you know, they just want to continue letting the software update as per usual. So, you know, this incident from the start is not being treated as a malicious act, but can we be very sure that this is not a cyber attack at all? As of this moment, based on uh, based on what Crossrite is saying, based yeah. on what uh, the other outlets media is saying, uh, it doesn't appear to be a cyber attack. Okay. It appears to be just uh, a patch gone wrong. Okay. Um, and they have enough reasons yeah. to testify that. Mm. Okay. And what are those reasons? Might Do you know? So CrowdStrike, for example, have came out to say, you know, this is, uh, they know of the issue. Okay. They, and they, you know, they have uh, issued, uh, like, for example, instructions of what to do, how to recover and so on. So it shows that, well, they are aware of what actually is going on. Okay, Professor Goh, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, your perspectives on this. Uh, that was Professor Goh Wei Han from the Singapore Institute of Technology. Thank you very thank much. You.